Okay, this is our little short introduction on Hertz vectors. Now, Hertz vectors are a way to uh, solve for, uh, well, like an intermediate field between the rho and sigma, or the rho and a, the vector potentials, vector potential, other potentials and the E and B. And in the presence of materials, it actually can get quite complicated. And that's where we're going to need uh, these. So these are a useful, I guess, stepping stone. Between uh, the um, Rho and J and uh, E and B in materials. So it's um, it's going to reduce the complexity. So let's look at Maxwell's equations to begin with. Uh, we have uh, del dot t equals zero, del dot b equals zero. We're again taking these in the source free, but with the material. So So no free charge, no free current, but we do have the presence of materials for using the D and H. So del across uh, E plus dv dt is equal to zero, and del across H minus dv dt is equal to zero, and these go along with the uh, constitutive relations D epsilon not E plus P. And H is equal to B over mu naught uh, minus magnetization. Now, what you do if you plug these in is you get the following. Uh, you get uh, del dot E equal to minus one over epsilon naught divergence of dipole moment free volume, del dot B equals zero, del cross E uh, plus dpdt. Really equal to zero, uh, but uh, del dot b, sorry, del cross b, um, minus uh, the EDT and Let's see, it's actually got an epsilon naught out in front of that, so best put that in. Uh, is going to have uh, be equal to uh, mu naught dpdt uh, and the mu naught's going to be in front, so let's stick plus the curl event. And so if we think about what's going on here, these here, they look like uh, the Maxwell equations.
but uh, with different sources. So rho is equal to minus the divergence of dipermon per volume, and j is equal to d p t plus l cross n. So what we have is uh, a <clears throat> we can, if we can manage to calculate what J is by solving this, what rho is by solving that, right, then we can take and, and use these in our standard equations to get, uh, uh, to get E and B. For example, uh, we know that um, the A would be, so um, let me just write this down. So we can plug this J into uh, A F R T plus mu naught over four pi integral of the volume of j r prime t minus r minus r prime over c divided by r minus r prime v e prime. We know this works going from j to the vector potential and then we go to the vector potential. So the other fields. Uh, if we can solve for this J in terms of these material properties, we can just plug that right in here and we can get this and we can get uh, H. So that's sort of the game to split the problem as it were into two pieces. So Let's do a proper definition here. We'll define the uh, Earth's vectors. I E. I am as uh, x equals minus del dot I E that's like the potential and the vector potential equivalent is going to be mu not epsilon not partial pi B partial T plus the cross by E. And so to put it in a little different way, uh, first factor E vector M are two uh, F and A uh, just like row and M are two E and M to row and J. Let's 
So that's P. It's like P and M are two. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So if we plug into the wave equation for P. which of course is, um, just I'll write it down, the scalar wave equation minus u naught epsilon naught partial square root e partial t squared t minus one over epsilon naught rho. We get the following, <laughs> uh, del squared minus del dot by e minus one over c squared, partial, partial t squared of uh, minus e is equal to one over epsilon naught delta p. Or uh, take Used to the fact that del squared is del dot grad. And if we do that, uh, we can write this as a del dot everything. So we end up with plus in of uh, pi e minus over c squared squared t squared plus one reps on that p. That's all the divergences, it's equal to zero. And that'll be true if the stuff from the brackets is valid. And so we can say if this gives us the Laplacian of our Hertz vector for E minus one over C squared partial squared to vector for E T squared is equal to uh, minus P. So. Uh, and so that Looks like you turn P up here into pi E, and you turned uh, rho into P, essentially. That's what we're sort of talking about there for the, the first terms. <clears throat> and there's a solution to this. We know the solution, we just have to change the names, right? That's what makes it easy. Kind of like do things twice in a row. Uh, we can simply write down the solution. And you can also write down the one. I didn't write down the equation for pi n, but it, it actually works the same way. And you get the same. And if the uh, these things here, if you look at the uh, 
at the green function. Uh, talk, which is also available the same way this one is. Uh, you find that the, um, the green function for the electromagnetic wave is actually uh, 1 over uh, r delta 2 minus r over c. <coughs> and uh, this solves the, the wave equation. And so that actually gives you this almost directly up to the up to the constant side front. <clears throat> so this is about as easy as you can make it. Um, and so you still have to know what P and M are in the material, and then you integrate them out to get P's. Now you want to get E and B. So continue for uh, E and B, uh, E is equal to minus the gradient of B. Uh, minus the ADT. And so that's the gradient of E minus E that epsilon L partial squared plus partial T squared minus partial partial T gradient by M. And if we stick in a, a little um, uh, vector identity, the gradient of divergence, let's just put in some arbitrary vector for divergence, is equal to del across del across that vector plus the plus in that vector, then you can say that E is equal to del cross del cross by E minus partial by M partial T. So the curl of this quantity of vectors plus another term, the Laplacian of E minus E not epsilon not times time dependent, essentially the wave equation again. It is equal to uh, Del cross, uh, del cross, uh, minus P of epsilon not, or simply D is epsilon not the curl of del cross pi. And so you're getting D from the curl of this combination. Right here, the curl of the curl of the E part or the time derivation of the M part. And that gives you D. It's kind of expected D should come easier because they're already in the material. H follows um, from this as well. Of the page.
So So H then is equal to uh, epsilon naught DDT, a uh, bunch of things, curl of pi E minus partial partial two pi M, which is showing up <laughs> uh, plus one over mu naught, the gradient of the divergence. That, of course, came from the del cross A is mu naught epsilon naught partial, partial T plus E plus You can uh, expand that out as soon as you need to. <clears throat> uh, the H is again probably the one that's easier to grab. So that goes along with D. And then you can always get them from the known. You assume you know M anyway. Grab the other side from that. <clears throat> Okay, so let's do an example and then we'll be finished with our little first things. Uh, the example will be a dipole at the origin. And so the polarization per unit volume r prime t prime is equal to P T prime delta P alpha prime with um, our polarization being P naught C hat plus P naught is I omega T prime. T prime is, of course, the retarded time, T minus R over C, and Z hat direction. Now, if you go through the analysis, you find that pi E is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught times that integral. But that integral falls apart because of the delta function. And you just get P of uh, T prime over R, since the integral goes with the delta function. And pi m is simply zero. And so it's useful to move to spherical coordinates Before you differentiate, uh, so c hat now goes equal to c hat dot r hat times r hat plus c hat dot theta hat plus theta hat plus c hat dot p hat hat direction. And in case you've been sort of following along my rotation in the coordinates lecture, uh, that's where we always do it. These are unit vectors. It just cosines the angles between the various quantities. So this is cosine theta r hat. Uh, between theta hat, you already had a 90 degrees. That's going to turn it into actually minus sine of theta 
minus because the way it went, and it has no e hat component. And so we can now write in spherical components star pi e is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught so p of t minus r over c over r cosine theta r hat minus sine theta theta hat. And uh, of course, now you go on to um, to use that the e is going to be uh, the gradient of del dot pi e it's one over c squared times. squared. And then the other term is zero, and you use um, spherical gradient and delta, which we also pick up in the coordinate system case. And as far as the time dependence, uh, we also We'll use um, so using the spherical gradient, spherical del dot, and you need to know partial partial t, p of t minus r over c is equal to p dot is equal to um, minus i omega t and the R dependence of the same thing is uh, minus one over C P dot is equal to uh, I omega over C P T minus R over C. <clears throat> so with those things and with the spherical notation, you should be able to go in there and pull out the fields. And you already know what the fields are in the variable of the origin because we talked about it in the class. So there's nothing really new or extremely different, difficult about that. But you just need to make sure that you do properly apply the rules of the road, so to speak. And with that, that's the end of our extra lecture on Hertz vectors. And we'll therefore stop.